Hi, welcome back to my channel, Beautiful Minutia. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany, and today I am going to be sharing with you my reading journal for 2024 and kind of reviewing my journal from 2023. So in the past, I have used this kind of journal, which is much larger, as you will see, and I used to use it for everything, not just my reading but I had a lot of more elaborate styles for like monthly spreads and weekly spreads and all that kind of stuff. And I've just kind of run out of time to do that. So this year I have downgraded to this much smaller reading journal. This one I purchased on Amazon. I'll link it if I can find that it's still in stock. I tried to get a smaller version of it and accidentally ordered the wrong kind. So I ended up at Hobby Lobby and found this beautiful one. This is the Hobby Lobby, I think it's Master's Touch brand art supplies. And it was only $6 full price and it was a 40% off that. So it was a great deal. So check out Hobby Lobby if you're looking for a more inexpensive bullet journal. The pages are nice and thick and nothing's bleeding through. So I was very pleased with it. Let's go ahead and start with my 2023 journal. For both of these journals, what I have done is I've used Micron pens and then I have used Tombow markers, the dual brush pens to use for all of the coloring. So this is my first spread that I have for the year. This is my annual bookshelf. So this was empty at the beginning of the year. In it, I have put all of the things that I have read this year and I have a color code here as well as here I have whether it's I read it on audiobook, Kindle, it was a buddy read. I have a thing if I want to put a half star. And then also I have an H if it was a homeschool read aloud. Some of the things on here are blank because I haven't finished them and I'm not sure if I'll finish them by the end of the year at the time that I'm filming this. So that's why some of them are not colored in, but I did run out of space and so I had to make an extra little bookshelf which I didn't even come close to filling out. Some of these are blank because I'm still in the process of reading them, so they don't have star ratings yet. Moving on, this is my goals page, including my Goodreads goals. And the Goodreads goals, I kind of like gave up on <laughs> filling out. I think I have filled out through October on here, but it just has like my basic goals that I want for next year, which was to read more nonfiction, finish more series, have quarterly five-star prediction TBRs, reduce my physical TBR, and give more room for mood reading. You probably saw my goals video a couple of days ago, so you'll see whether or not I have completed those, regardless as to whether or not I checked them off. The next page is this stats page, which I have done pretty much every year <laughs> for the past few years that I've been sharing my book journal here on booktube. And I love this because it's kind of pixelated and you can see, although I messed up <laughs> on this one big time and that's okay so what i ended up doing is i have rows here that i can color in per month and rather than having a color code for each month what i did is i did my favorite book of the year here and the color of the book cover coordinates to what however many per month that i read so i have my total books read out of those books that i've read how many of those I owned how many I went to the library for, how many were short stories, classics, middle grade, YA, adult, nonfiction, or part of my read or read project, how many of them were five stars, four stars, three stars, two stars, a one star, or a DNF, and I put a D in the middle if it was a DNF rather than a one star, which I think actually I haven't completed this, and I think that all of them were. I don't think that there's anything that I actually full on <laughs> rated one star. Usually if I finished it, I find some literary merit in it and give it at least two stars. This next page is my annual TBR. So you have your reader read list on the right hand side here. I use the Buzzwordathon from Books and Lala and the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge by Chantel Reads All Day to help pick which books I was gonna read each month. As you can see, there are some months that I didn't come up with prompts for, and that's okay. <laughs> and then on the right-hand side, we have my classic TBR for the year. And what I decided to do was to try to read much more 
broadly. I tend to kind of stay in my lane with classics a lot with especially reading Russian classics and Victorian classics. So I wanted to choose books from all over. So we have books from pretty much every continent on here except I think Antarctica and Australia. But other than that, I think that I have books from the main continents and different books there. And I did not finish all the books on this TBR. Some I DNF'd, some I just decided I wasn't gonna read, and some I'm planning to read next year. So that's kind of how that worked out. I definitely didn't read all of them, but I did try to go for a much more diverse classics TBR in 2023. Here's where my bullet journal gets kind of messy. It's not even staying closed. I had series in progress and I've updated those that I've read. Some of them I've made no progress on, like Red Rising, like Gregor the Overlander, but then I have these new series that I've started that I meant to write things for and I just didn't. It just fell off at the end of the year. And then these last two pages here, the buddy reads and the challenges are just keeping track of buddy reads I had for each month and challenges that I had. I also very quickly fell off books purchased. Like I think like this, these were in May. So I don't have anything that I've read past May on this, on this list here. And then this is my last page here. So I have a page to chart my YouTube growth over the year, which again, you'll see, I didn't fill anything in on this after July. And then I also have my summer book bingo uh, filled out with however many bingos I have and it's color coded for which ones per month. And then I have a list here on the side of all the books that I read for summer book bingo. So that is my 2023 very messy book journal. Here is my lovely 2024 journal. I love how pretty this is. I was not planning on getting one this pretty. It just worked out this way. This year I actually did a title page. This is much smaller than last year's bullet journal because like I said, I'm using this only for reading pretty much and content creation, so keeping track of YouTube videos that I'm planning, and I'm also using it to kind of track some of my other hobbies, like video games and that kind of stuff. We'll show you that page too, if you're interested. Well, actually, I'll show you even if you're not interested, but it's only one page. So anyways, this one does have a title page. So for this title page, I just tore up some pieces of paper and a book that was falling apart, and then I had this sticker that I think maybe Dia sent me, so I did not purchase that, so I can't really link any of the stickers or anything because most of them have been gifted to me or I got at random places, but I used most of the same supplies that I used last year in terms of dual brush pens from Tombow and Micron pens, and then I also bought these little letter stamps from Hobby Lobby when I bought this journal, and so those are kind of like the main new things that I have for this. This is my bookshelf page for this year. So it's different than last year. And I kind of stole this rolling cart idea, like a TBR cart idea from Katie from Life Between Words from a book journal spread that she did years ago and that I kept thinking about because I loved the little like TBR cart, even though I don't have one of those. I have one for our homeschool, but that's it. So I have books obviously all over here, but then when you turn this, there's some books here as well. And this is my key as to what my rating is gonna look like on here. And I have more books behind here. I just use washi tape to kind of like make this carpet, but I think there is uh, about 145 books here with room to do like a little bit more over here or even stacking other places if I need to. But if I do a lot less than 140, I can just like color in these books without putting titles on the spine and I can just not put anything on the back of here. So I kind of designed it that way. So if it ends up being a lot less then that's fine. But last year I had around a hundred books on my shelf and it ended up not being enough and I needed another shelf, especially when I considered DNFs in there as well. 
this page is not very exciting. This is my 2024 reading stats, which I did do in 2023 and I showed you and I've also done it in 2022. And I really love this page when it's finished, but it doesn't look like a whole lot right now. So essentially I did do some things a little bit differently. Like all of this is still the same as far as total owned library, star rating, all that kind of stuff. And over here, we still have classics, middle grade, YA, nonfiction, short stories. For adult, I have general fiction. I added a sci-fi and fiction section because I've been reading a lot more fantasy and especially, but I've read a lot of some sci-fi as well. And I want to be able to track that as a genre instead of only having adult altogether unless it's classics or nonfiction. And then I'm not tracking my reader read this year the same way <laughs> that video is coming out tomorrow so you will see kind of how i'm structuring that this year so i don't have a box to try to track those but i do have one to track buddy rates you'll notice i also have the months down here and i will color code those as i go instead of having favorites on this page i did it on this one so have the best of for each month and these are the new letter stamps that i bought and then i have a favorite of the year page so i will put my favorite book of the year right here this page is pretty similar to what i had last year in terms of my goodreads goal i only have through 100 and once i hit it I hit it. I'm not going to worry about tracking exactly how many books I read on this page because I have the total books on this page here. So I don't really need it on this one as well. And then I'm going to write my goals in here, which I have not yet done. But if you see my goals video, then you kind of already know where that's going. The next page I have a series overview. These are series that I want to continue this year. So Stormlight Archive, Keeper of the Lost Cities, Gentleman Bastards, Gregor and the Overlander, Skyward, Melindy Family, Lady Trent, Attack on Titan, which is like a bajillion. Uh, and we're going to be reading through Mistborn this year as well. And then I have, obviously I have some more space on here, but I did a Dutch door. So that way I could continue a series because there's some, some manga series that I want to put on here, but I don't know how many volumes they have. So rather than just putting the box and not knowing how many there should be, I did a Dutch door. So I have room to start more series to track. Here we have my reader read list, which I've not yet filled in. That video is coming out tomorrow, so you will see that. I am using the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge again this year to help track that, so I can put the prompt here and then put the book title in here as well. But I love this side. I just tore some paper, and this is another sticker that I'm pretty sure Dia sent me with a cat on it, and I love it so much. I think this might be my favorite layout that I have in the whole bullet journal so far. So I have my classics TBR on this side with all the books, which maybe I'll color in as I go. I don't know, I haven't really made a plan for that. And then over here, I have a place to write all the classics that I read for the whole year in order. I like to rank all the classics I read at the end of the year. So having them all in one space is gonna make it a lot easier for me because every year I just have to go back through and figure out what I read. And then this is kind of the last planning page. So this is the place that I can put buddy reads and challenges slash readathons or read alongs that are happening throughout the year. So I just have a box for each year to put whatever, but I love these stamps. As you can see, I have used them a ton in this journal. And then I do have a place to track all of the Switch games that I'm playing and my markers are running out. I use the Tombow Pastels, which is my favorite set, but I've used them so much the markers are starting to wear out. So it looks a little bit streaky, but this actually looks exactly like our Nintendo Switch because we have the Animal Crossing edition. So it's got those pastel Joy-Cons and they're so cute. So I'm going to write on here all the games that I currently own, whether I'm in the progress of them or I haven't even started them because I have a lot of backlogged <laughs> games that I've bought on sale and not played yet, but I do have a Dutch door for this as well. So that way I can list more, but I have a key up here so I can put a key when it's finished, a heart if I finish it and it's a favorite. And then if I just didn't like it or got bored with it or whatever, I have this little symbol so that way I can symbolize it on here next to the games once I list them. The last annual page on I have on here is just a place to list favorite songs and I really really like that it's very simple I'll probably do like different colors to write in different songs and then I do have January's done but it's not really anything special it's kind of just a recording schedule here a place to put books dates read 
and just kind of like overall stats for the month. So that's not really anything exciting for the January spread. Maybe I'll make a more elaborate in the future and share them like I used to do with my other ones. But I put so much work <laughs> into this that I really had no desire to put a lot of effort into January's TBR because, or not TBR, but spread, because this was a lot more work and obviously some pages more than others, but I'm really happy with how they turned out and I think they're really cute and the cuter the page, the more likely I am to use them. So hopefully I don't mess them up or just stop using them like I did with my 2023 journal, but that's kind of the final flip through. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you do a book journal? Do you have a way to track or anything like that? I always love chatting with you guys about all of that kind of stuff. So just let me know. And thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like and also subscribe so you can continue to see more bookish content from me. And I will see you tomorrow for another 12 days of Christmas.